it's a busy day in the workshop today. So we're making rafter squares today. Uh, Matt's in there uh, in the workshop making the uh, fences for the small rafter squares, the fixed rafter squares. And we've just taken delivery of some stock for the blades. And fortunately, this happens occasionally where with your suppliers, you specify that the stock, one, you have to specify that the stock is the type that you want. So we use a T6682 uh, plate, hog one plate. And, uh, and we, we have that cut into particular sizes, certain sizes. And they usually cut this with a guillotine. Uh, some, some places use a saw, but most of, it, most of them use a guillotine. And this is four mil plate. And because it goes on a guillotine, lots of material goes through that guillotine. So there can be scratches or there can be, there can be burrs on the machine, which can cause scratches. So we always specify that our stock is coated and that has a protective vinyl uh, film on both sides. And then when it's transported, we also ask for uh, cardboard packers between each sheet. Unfortunately, today it's arrived with neither of those. So, as you can see, uh, they're really, it's really quite scratched. And so, all of this stock, which probably costs uh, a few thousand pounds, will have to be uh, returned. And um, so, yeah, bit of a bit of a pain. And when things like that happen, you you order in a certain amount of stock so that you get the right, best price for it. And, um, and so that'd be a big bulk, a big pallet load of stuff. And if it's not right, it puts everything back a couple of weeks because now we've got to wait for them to replace this, which means they've got to get the stock cut, get it coated and then cut, uh, packed up and, and sent back to us. So usually they're pretty good. This is the first time it's happened for quite a while, but it can still be a bit of an inconvenience. So these have had their first op. And what we need to do is we turn them over and we have a second op where we machine away uh, the space there for the vial, which I will get now. Basically, we weren't sure that these would always come in the exact dimension. So if we order these and then we machine a load of parts, if we, if we, if, 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 if let's say these are 0 0.1 or 2 mil slightly wider um, than the last batch, and we've machined the parts to fit the previous batch, these won't fit. And but actually, we found that they're really, really accurate, so um, not a problem. And um, what we do is we machine a pocket into the back side of the fence, which is an interference fit. And then with the other part, we machine a bigger um, hole in the back so that it doesn't, the, the two sides aren't competing with each other. And uh, so on one side, that fits in nice and snug. Right, okay, this is uh, something that we don't want to see. This is called chip weld, and the 12 mil end mil has uh, chip welded whilst we're, making, uh, whilst we're making the AF16s. Yeah, we're machining AF16s at the minute. Uh, the tool broke. Uh, we chip welded the 12 mil end mil. Yeah, it's something that we thought we'd managed to um, get rid of. It's plagued us for quite a while, seeing as most of the things that we make is out of um, aluminium. And uh, you can see. We've got the um, so you can see there. That's where it's really started to make a noise. It does. Uh, it did that pocket first, and uh, and chip welded there, and then moves over to here. And but actually, when you look, it starts over here, and you can see that it's not quite cut through all the way to the bottom of the of the part. What we really need to be doing is setting the tool height. Um, so it goes beyond the bottom of the workpiece and at the moment the tool goes one millimeter down further than the bottom of the workpiece the problem is the radius is 1.5 mil so it's 0.5 mil too high uh, and that's why it's leaving this and it's essentially just spinning there and it's rubbing 
onto um, the, the, this edge there and it's not cutting it away properly. No doubt it's picked up a bit of weld there, brought it over here and basically just rubbed a pocket into there and that's what it ends up being like. So, annoyingly that tool's about £100, something like that, just shy of 100 quid, and that's scrap now. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to save um, some of the parts, or the parts that's in the machine. But yeah, so that's gonna have to go. So the AF-16 is actually this tool here. Uh, it's a bit of a brute and it's huge. Uh, 16 inches, pretty much, from the center pivot there to the end of the arm here. When you compare that to the AF-4, it's uh, tiny. But really, really handy for big projects if you're using uh, RSJs or if you're trying to get a measurement from something that's a little bit bumpy. Uh, the workshop over the road, uh, Gazi uses one of these all the time uh, to take measurements when he's out on site. So really, really handy. Anyway, this is what we're making. When we're machining it, uh, this is what we're making. There's two arms, basically a lower and an upper. The lower is the, uh, the one that we anodize blue and then we laser all of the dials, all of the scales onto it. And then the upper, which is this one. And this is the one that has the windows and the arrows. And then these arrows are hand painted uh, just to so they stand out and are a little bit easier to see. And this hides, the great thing about this is it hides all of the uh, all the other numbers on the dial, the things that confuse your eye and uh, it only points to the ones that you're actually wanting to see. So one of the really nice things about this is it's fully CNC machined. Uh, we've got a bunch of different dials here. So we've got the protractor here, we've got the single, the mitre, we've got a quick uh, look up compound mitres table. So this is used for coving or um, crown molding. So we've got some uh, roofing pitches here for rafter cuts. These are measured uh, as a rise and run or uh, degrees. So in the spirit of uh, efficiency, we're also lasering uh, some RSA4s, which is a new product that we're bringing out. This is what they'll turn into. So you can see we've got the uh, inch uh, measurement system on these. We've got uh, every eighth and uh, sixteenth on the back fences are, are stepped. So you can rotate them to get different measurements. And just like the rafter squares, we've got notches rather than um, holes, scribe holes, like you have in the micro trim squares. And we've got the uh, protractor running up one side and the common and hip valley. And it's just um, a handy little tool that you can have, uh, it, very, very light. So I'll update you with these RSA4s and the metric equivalent, which is the RSA100. In the next few days, we're getting them finished on the laser and the fences anodized, and then we'll get them all assembled. And this should hopefully be online uh, within the next few days. Like, 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 subscribe, follow, share. Ugh.